A very good evening. From stories around the world to stories here at home, this is the National News Broadcast. I'm Vidushini Sadis Kumar. Good evening, I'm Clifford Richards. First of all, we take a look at the headlines. 4G technology to Kelimkanda village in Kaluthara. The Anuradhapura Sacred Area Development Project is to be implemented under three zones. The President inspects the Master Development Plan. The government says that the offenders of the Easter Sunday attack will be punished, disregarding ranks. The motorcyclist who killed two children and caused grievous injuries to an expecting mother has been placed under detention. The number of fully cured from COVID-19 exceeds 20,000. 650 fully cured patients return to their homes. Moving on to the stories in detail. Provision of communication facilities with 4G coverage to the Kelinkanda village in the Kalutara district has taken place yesterday. Director General of the Telecommunications Regulatory Commission, Osha Desenayaka, has presided over the ceremony held in this connection at the premises of the Kelinkanda Vidyale. Well, several pictures were published in uh, several social medias recently of how a group of children in the Kelinkanda village were engaged in education by the roadside using online facilities. The Telecommunications Regulatory Commission, after receiving the news, had taken steps to provide 4G technological facilities to the village within two weeks. Communication towers have been jointly established by Sri Lanka Telecom, Mobitel and Dialogue companies. Under the supervision of the Sri Lanka Telecommunications Regulatory Commission, youth in the area have also extended their labour in the programme. The project has been implemented under the Gamata Sannivedane project of the Saubhage Dakma policy statement. The objective is to provide 4G technological facilities covering all provinces in the island. People in the Kelinkanda village earned their livelihood by engaging in cultivation of crops and also by means of minor industries. It has also been pointed out that the area is being subjected to natural calamities from time to time. Inability to provide systematic communication facilities has been a tremendous obstruction, especially on occasions of such natural catastrophes. It is expected that the social and economic conditions of the students would be enhanced with the provision of the latest communication technology. Computers were also handed over to the Kelinkanda Primary School. Foundation stone was laid for the construction of a computer laboratory for the school in parallel to this event. The machines and equipment were distributed among the children through the sponsorship of Dialogue and Mobitel institutions. Venerable Theros Raduliadde Punyaratana and Manampiti Atulakasiri, as well as officials and regional officials of Mobitel and Dialogue and zonal directors of education, have graced the event. The Anuradhapura Sacred Art Development Master Plan has been subjected to scrutiny of President Gotabe Rajapaksa today. A sum of 450 million rupees has been set aside for the project. The President has arrived at the historic Anuradhapura town this morning. He was engaged in religious observances in front of the Jai Shri Mahabodhya. The President, upon arrival in the sacred site, has also called on Atamasthana Dipati, Venerable Dr. Pallegam Sirinivasa Thera, and received blessings. Thereafter, he has visited the Ruan Valley Mahasaya sacred site and met Chief Incumbent of the Ruan Valley Mahasaya, Venerable Pallegam Mahemaratana Thera. President Gotabe Rajapaksa has venerated the Mahasaya and inspected the Anuradhapura Sacred Area Development Master Plan. The project is to be implemented altogether as 28 projects under three zones. All constructions are expected to be completed before December of 2024. Additional Secretary to the Ministry of Urban Development, Anjali Devaraj, Chairman of the Urban Development Authority, Hashan Silva and Director General Prasad Ranvira have also taken part in the discussion. We now move on to an update with regard to the local situation with regard to COVID-19. The epidemiology unit says that the number of fully recovered COVID-19 patients has exceeded 20,000. Another batch of 652 fully cured corona patients has left hospitals today. Another 33 COVID-19 patients who've recovered from the disease were discharged from COVID-19 treatment centers in the Polonaro district. They were residents of Colombo, Gampa and Kurunagala districts. Another group of COVID-19 cured patients left the COVID-19 intermediate 
treatment centers in Pindamila today. They were residents of districts of uh, Colombo, Kalutar, Gaul, Matara, Hambantota and Kandy. 3,434 fully cured patients were discharged from hospitals in the past week alone. The percentage of fully cured patients has increased to 74.24. The total number of such patients is at 20,090. 25.28 percent of COVID-19 patients are continuously receiving treatment. As a number, this amounts to 4,840. 4,501 COVID-19 patients were identified today. All of them were close associates of the patients of the Paleogoda cluster. The number of totally cured patients released today was 652. 13,664 PCR tests have been conducted in the island. Yesterday, the total number of PCR tests conducted so far in the country stands at 892,173. Meanwhile, one more COVID-related death was reported from from Piliandala. 265 officials of the police STF were reported to have been contracted with the COVID-19 disease. Meanwhile, 230 officials have fully recovered. Meanwhile, Minister Sarat Mirasekhar said in Parliament today that all police officers are being subjected to quarantine due to COVID threat will be provided all necessary payments relating to their duties. 17 patients were detected from the Aliagood area today. The number of identified patients included eight employees attached to a garment factory in Durumpitiya, Aliagood, and their 11 of their close associates. The total number of patients reported from the garment factory is around 200. 16 patients have been reported from Dandukale in Norton Bridge. The travel restrictions are continuously imposed in that area. The number of COVID-19 patients reported from the area of the Sitawak Export Processing Zone has increased to 70 with the detection of six more patients from three factories yesterday. The health ministry said patients have been reported from a kitchen of the National Hospital. However, it adds that the maximum precautions have been taken by the health authorities when handing over food to patients. A discussion was conducted at the health ministry today whether to open or not the country to tourism industry in the face of the COVID pandemic. The meeting was attended by representatives of the ministry as well as Sri Lanka Tourist Board, the Ministry of Tourism and Hotel Industrialists connected to lodgings of tourists. Programs are being invented to enlighten the general public in the western province how they should engage in their daily activities without being afflicted by the COVID-19 disease. The first stage of the program to educate general public through distribution of leaflets commenced from Malabay town yesterday through the guidance of the office of the senior DIG. The program is being carried out under the theme, Let us defeat Corona and safeguard lives. It is being sponsored by Unilever, a company under the Lifebuoy brand name. Deputy Director General of Public Health Dr. Hemant Taherat says the existing hospital facilities are currently sufficient to threat rather treat the COVID-19 patients in the current pandemic wave. He expressed hope that the pandemic level in the Colombo city can be obtained in the coming weeks. In these 62 treatment centers, almost 68% of the beds have been occupied, but remaining beds are ready to be used for any increased number of reported cases. And out of the 15 intensive care units, ICUs, we have earmarked 146 ICU beds to be used for any COVID patients who need intensive care in the course of their, during the course of this illness. And out of which only 15 beds have been used at present. And over 13,000 PCR tests have been performed over the past 24 hours. And at present, we know that the Colombo area, especially Colombo Municipal Council areas in the northern part of the Colombo city, there have been several lockdown areas. And these areas are now subject to, to the many public health interventions conducted by the Colombo Municipal Council as well as the supported by the Ministry of Health. And at present, the number of cases reported from these areas are gradually coming down, but it will take little time to totally complete. But during that time, depending on the number of cases and the degree to which the public health interventions have been completed, the areas under lockdown would be gradually eased out. And at present, the government is considering several areas that may be eased unless otherwise if they are provided that there are no more new clusters appearing in those areas. Well, the government says that offenders of the Easter terror attack will be punished disregarding their ranks. Minister of Public 
Security Sarat Meera Sekar said in Parliament today that a discussion will be conducted at the Attorney General with the Attorney General in this regard next Monday. And today in the Budget Committee stage, discussions were centred on the Ministries of Tourism, Ports and Shipping and related state ministries. Minister of Public Security Sarat Meera Sekar said that he is making the statement on behalf of the government. 257 persons have been remanded in this connection. 86 have been detained under detention orders. The responsibility of the legal aspects of the case lies with the Attorney General's department. The Minister further said that he will meet the Attorney General to discuss on the expedition of the implementation of the process next Monday. Eight bomb attacks had taken place. He added that investigations are being conducted on all these incidents. It has been pointed out that the Terrorist Investigation Division had submitted two files with relevant details on Zaran Hashim and National Tawhid Jamaat organization on two occasions to the Department of Attorney General prior to the Easter Sunday terror attack. However, the department had failed to provide instructions regarding the legal measures to be taken in this regard. This was disclosed during testimony in the Presidential Commission investigating into Easter attack today. State Council Malik Aziz, who were in charge of the files, gave evidence before the Commission today. He said that the facts contained in these files were not significant enough to give legal advice. The Justice Chairman of the Commission has expressed th his grave apprehension on the manner the State Attorney had given evidence and warned the witness in this connection. The first witness at the Commission today was State Counsel Malik Aziz. A special feature at today's proceedings has been the Justice of the Supreme Court and Chairman of the Commission himself leading the evidence. In answering a question as to who was his supervising officer, Malik Aziz said, that person was the present Deputy Solicitor General, Asad Nawawi, who had functioned as a senior government attorney at law. He also said that Nawawi had handed him over the questionable file. Aziz also said that documents in the file now in possession of the Commission were not present in the original file directed to him by the Terrorist Investigation Division on the 7th to June 2017. He added that the file handed over to him on the day was comprised of only 16 pages. He added that the file had contained information only pertaining to the banning of a website and arresting of member suspects of National Tawhid Jamaat organization for expressing extremist opinion. Upon interrogation, the suspect further said that the files did not contain any information that warranted for giving legal advice on national security. He also said that therefore he had informed a terrorist investigation division to send him only video scenes of Facebook accounts. In responding to a query raised by Chairman of the Presidential Commission, whether he had conducted talks with Deputy Solicitor General Asad Nawawi prior to the attack, he said that there were not enough substantial information to engage in such a discussion, but that he presented an interim report. In that instance, the Chairman had reminded the witness that such a report was handed over only after the April 21st attack. State Minister Lohan Ratpathe says 8,000 prison inmates who have been incarcerated on minor offences but unable to pay their fines will be released on the 31st of this month. The State Minister made these remarks engaging in an inspection tour in the Valicada prison this morning. He has also expressed opinions regarding inmates in the death row as well. State Minister Lohan Ratpatta said that he promised to release around 8,000 prisoners who are unable to pay their bail. By the 31st of this month, the death sentence will be changed to lifetime imprisonment, he said. An expecting mother was seriously injured and her two daughters were killed in a road accident at a pedestrian crossing in Egoda Uyena Muratua around 10 o'clock last night. The suspect in this connection was produced before the courts and was ordered to be detained till the 18th of this month. The motorcycle was travelling at high speed towards Moratua when it hit 24-year-old mother and her two daughters aged 7 and 1 year at the crossing. The two children were killed on the spot. The mother was admitted to Pandura Base Hospital and later on transferred to the intensive care unit of the Colombo National Hospital for further treatment. The motorcyclist was a youth around 20 years of age, a resident of Moses Lane 
Korolevel monitor. The police is in possession of photos of this suspect causing serious accidents riding his motorcycle in previous occasions as well. He was subjected to a fine of 15,000 rupees after being convicted of speed riding around two weeks ago. The suspect was ordered to be detained till the 18th of this month upon being produced before the Murutu Magistrates Court today. And now a quick check on the weather situation. The Met Department says that the low pressure situation in the Bay of Mannar has now reduced to a minor disturbance in the sea area. The department further points out that the impact of the cyclonic disturbance is continuously receding. However, intermittent or thunder showers may prevail in the northern and northwestern provinces as well as the districts of Anuradhapura and Trincomalee. In certain locations, fairly strong rainfall around 75 millimeters is expected. The Met Department adds that intermittent rainfall may also prevail in the western Sabaragamu and central provinces and also in the Gaul and Mathura districts. The wind speed in the seas from Puttalam to Mulaithi via Mannar and Kankasanthure may sometimes increase as much as 50 to 60 km per hour and in some instances to 70 per hour. The weather report further says that the sea areas will remain rough from time to time. A request has been made from fishing and naval communities to refrain from engaging in activities in the shallow and deep seas of Puttalam to Mulaithi across Mannar and Kankasanthure until tomorrow morning. District Secretary of Babunia Saman Bandulasena says 113 small tanks in the district were overflowing due to heavy rainfall. And our correspondent in Gaul says Gaul has been receiving incessant rainfall since this morning. As a result, obstructions have been caused to daily routine of the people. Strong winds accompanied by heavy showers causing obstructions for vehicle transport as well. A soil mound has fallen on the area near the Mohini El in Nallathani on the Muskelia Nallathani main road this morning. Our correspondent says officials of the Norwood Road Development Authority are taking measures to remove the debris. Jaffna has received torrential rainfall due to the Burevi cyclone. The bus stand was submerged and areas including Point Pedro, Sandipile, Nallur and Gurunagar were also underwater. Applications have been called for providing educational opportunities in grade 6 in new schools for those who have passed the grade 5 scholarship examination. The Minister of Education says applications should be submitted before the 10th of this month. The parents have been accorded the opportunity to receive all applications and instructions leaflets from the principals of schools from where the students had sat for the grade 5 scholarship examination. All accurately filed application forms should be handed over to the principals of these schools. The Ministry further says that relevant directors of education in the educational zones and principals have been informed on the health guidelines to be followed in receiving the applications from schools which were closed down in areas due to the COVID pandemic. Well, that's all the news we have for you. Do enjoy the rest of the programs. Take care and good night. Good night.